morning. We'll be using morning setting of the Office of Daily Prayer, page 295. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. So as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone and its place knows it no more. For the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my son. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our text for meditation is Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the, men were built, that the men were building. The Lord said, If, as one people, speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language, so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from, from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the account of Shem. Two years after the flood, when Shem was hundred years old, he became the father of Arphazad. And after he became the father of Arphazad, Shem lived five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphazad had lived thirty-five years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphazad lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shalah had lived 30 years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shalah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. 
When Eber had lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he became the father of Reu. And after he became the father of Reu, Peleg lived 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Reu had lived 32 years, he became the father of Saru. And after he became the father of Saru, Reu lived 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Saru had lived 30 years, he became the father of Nahor. After he became the father of Nahor, Saru lived 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived 209 years, he became the father of Terah. After he became the father of Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. After Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. This is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahor were both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was barren. She had no children. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram. And together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. This is the word of the Lord. I want to focus on the Tower of Babel. Um, now, from God's speech, where he says, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Now, from that, we might assume that the people who are building the tower uh, could actually reach the heavens, because essentially the goal was to pool the resources so that collective humanity could reach up into the heavens and uh, become their own god. Hmm. So is God kind of admitting that that can kind of happen? Well, not even close. <laughs> because what actually happens is when God is looking at this tower going, oh, nothing's going to be impossible for them. Let me go all the way down there from heaven to earth to actually see this little tiny tower that they've made. Uh, the tower itself is not stable in the sense that it can actually do what they intended to do. What God is fearing for the people is that nothing will be impossible for them. Their idolatry, their uh, rebellion against God, nothing, that won't be impossible. And in truth, that is what they're trying to do, is rebel against God. So God is going, oh no, if they all speak one language of one mind, then all of them will be corrupt. All of them will try to fall into idolatry, and all of them will, will try to be their own God and fall away from uh, the one and, and only true God there is. So rather than allowing uh, them to do basically the worst thing imaginable to God, which is separate themselves from him and all his promises. God goes down and it gives them a curse or in some ways a gift of many, many different languages. It's not that the languages themselves are sinful or anything like that, it's just that uh, the division between people is what is sinful. Sin uh, divides one from another. It pits us against each other. So, in a sense, God was making, he was outwardly reflecting what was already in their hearts, basically the selfishness, the idolatry, and the desire to make themselves their own master and God. Uh, so when the people were divided by their languages, they were quite visibly divided. Uh, this 
This is actually reversed in the New Testament, where you find at Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, that all the people were able to speak God's word in many and various languages by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is not God removing the differences in languages. This is not God declaring the division in languages itself sinful. This is God showing that whatever uh, group you find yourself in, whatever language you're using, whatever division we have among us, God can unite us in his word. So rather than us trying to divide ourselves from God, trying to build a tower to heaven, rather than us try to divide ourselves from one another through our own selfish interest, our own selfish sinful interest, God comes to us through his word, spoken in every language, to make us one body in the church. Every single language has its own uh, little nuances, its own uh, mode of thought, because you can't directly translate one word to another uh, without some sort of loss of information, uh, some sort of loss of connotation in the language, too. It's, it's difficult being a translator because everything has a, a, a nuance to it. So when uh, God comes to us in our own individual languages, he's actually recognizing all the little differences we have as individual people, but showing us that we can, with our differences, we can still be united in him in the church. God does not divide us. Uh, he un unites us with his gospel. When we are divided, that is uh, God using the word of his law to expose our division that it already exists. But through the gospel, through the gospel, we are united so that we might not only join with each other as the body of the church, but with our God in heaven who allows us to come together in the Holy Spirit to worship Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Uh, we continue with the Apostles' Creed on the back cover of the hymn. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God Almighty, in your wisdom you divided into people that plainish an arm, and they are building the tower of Babel so that they may not work together in their evil, but have their evil exposed, so that they may be divided from one another, as they are already divided in their hearts, and allowed them, uh, and uh, forbade them from working together, and allowed them to scatter over the earth. Also, Lord, in your wisdom, you reversed this when you came, uh, came to us as the Holy Spirit in tongues of fire, so that all people uh, at the day of Pentecost uh, could hear your message. 
Please, Lord, allow us to receive the Holy Gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may be uh, renewed and united in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God, help us in our study of your word, which we find in the scriptures and where we find in your worship services. Please enlighten our hearts, sanctify us with your gifts, and forgive us as we continue forward in the church, where we daily receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, who uh, offers himself upon the cross for the forgiveness of our sin. Please, Lord, be with us and unite us forever with one another and with you into, into life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, merciful Father, created and completed all things. On this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create the beginning to our discontinuance and bless us end, that all our doings may be preserved in sin, and our lives sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul of all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that an evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.